Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Joseph Reyna with us, the author of Incredulous, and this guy knows so much about prophecies, ancient relics of antiquity. We're going to talk about a quasar right now, literally, uh, how did you describe that, Joseph, like an exploding solar system almost? What's the entire galaxy becoming a star? Something the size of a galaxy that becomes a star is what they figured out quasars are. Okay, and we're also going to talk about Antarctica and what is going on out there right now. Now, Joseph just disclosed some information with me about how there is a f- civilization, literally multiple civilizations that literally flash flooded in, or not flash flooded, like flash froze in Antarctica. So this is very deep. We're going to talk about some Planet X slash Exodus slash the Flood, NASA, and these seven planets that have been discovered, and just a collection of things all combined into one. So it's a real honor to speak with you, Joseph. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Um, I had thought I'd, I'd start talking again, only because of the resurrection and Easter coming up. So um, I wanted to link how Planet X seems to be part of all that. Fantastic. And also, I mean, you know, I know that you have done very few interviews over the past few years, and it's neat that you're kind of jumping out and and getting your feet wet again. Thanks. There was a time there where the information I was finding, I did not want to go on on the air and, and say something I shouldn't be saying. It was really bad what I was discovering. Well, let's get into it. What's going on? First, let's get into Antarctica, if we can. Well, apparently, um, Secretary of State Kerry was sent down there. I believe Obama's gone down there. I know the Pope has gone down there. Several states, um, leaders of state have gone down there. And it's supposed to be to get them ready for what's about to happen, a sort of disclosure. Except, uh, from what I'm hearing, they don't want disclosure, they're removing the bodies of what's called the preatomites. Preatomites were the species built before us, genetically engineered before us. They have a much longer skull. Sometimes the skull goes straight back, kind of like Nefertiri, and other times it flattens out, kind of widens to the back, much like the Gray's type of skull. And they're taller, and they have a funny body because they have a longer or more vertebrae in their backbone. So it's kind of long. And then they got this little pot belly. The, the way Akhenaten is portrayed in the in the images from Egypt, they have those type of bodies, almost a feminine-like body, flat chest, very little muscles for for the masculine, and uh, uh, large hips, this little pot belly, and a much longer torso with an elongated skull. So those were called the preatomites. They were far more intelligent, and uh, they it became troublesome, so they went to the The newer version, which is us, um, we have shorter lifespans and uh, limited capacity for memory. We're sort of wiped when we're born. We don't have access to those memories. And then we also don't have telepathics. So we're the second species that followed. And much of that is in a lot of the writings of the Hebrew. Not everything that was in the Hebrew writings were put into the Bible. They had to decide what was going to go in and what was going to stay out. And this one they decided to leave out because it was just too troublesome, and they went with the creation of Adam and Eve and left the other one out altogether. So that's what they're finding down there. Now, this civilization is supposed to have been flash frozen, and I know we've spoken before about the possibility that Earth is not that old, only 12,000 years old because of the galactic battle that took place between the reptilians and the Anunnaki. If that were the case, then... Earth would have broken away. Much of its atmosphere would have been gone. Uh, it would just be basically what would have been an island on that particular planet the size of Saturn. Would have become a sphere and then uh, would have tried to, I guess, regrow life on it. It would have kept some of its atmosphere, but would have lost a lot of, of the oxygen. We used to have 50% oxygen in the snow core. They find that uh, before 12,000 years, we had 50% oxygen. After that, it's down to 20%, 19%, somewhere in there. But to flash freeze these beings, there's also giants down there and dinosaurs that were flash frozen. The mastodons, I understand, are three times the size of an elephant, and they were flash frozen. And to flash freeze, uh, a pole shift would not do that. 
bullshit with, with change, you'd have time to go grab a coat. You don't have time for that when you're flash frozen. You're basically uh, mid-stride, completely stopped. All your blood vessels freeze, everything freezes it's way too fast. And from what I understand, they're removing these bodies. They've been down there for over 12 years, filming, removing, um, very sophisticated technology. And they're eventually going to have some sort of tour down there, I guess you can take, and walk through these, these ruins um, from what David Wilcock and several others have as well. There were three spaceships that crash landed there. Again, it was 12,000 years ago, right at the time of that galactic battle. And they speculate that these, these individuals landed there because there was already an ancient civilization there dating back millions of years. And, of course, that would have been Tiamat, part of Tiamat at the time. So they landed there. The ships couldn't get back off of Earth. So they, they started, um, I guess, building cities around there. I, again, this would have had to have Tiamat, not Earth, because once Earth took place, these guys were flash frozen in position. And they know that there's the tropical jungle down there, I believe 65,000 square miles, that was all flash frozen. So Antarctica was at one time a tropical location, and it was flash frozen very quickly. Plato puts it right at about the same time, 9,000 years before him, and um, he said it all happened in one day. So if the explosion occurred within a day, Earth would have sort of corrected itself and started trying to heal. But anything along the periphery where the atmosphere was completely ripped off would have been flash frozen. And... Um, now, now let me, can I jump in real quick to just sure. confirm a couple things? Because this is very interesting. And first of all, what would cause the flash freezing? And you said we're kind of the 2.0 version because the the first beans, or not the first beans, but the ones with the elongated skulls like Akhenaten, essentially they had longer lifespans and it sounds like they had more intuition. But why were they... a problem and are you referring to the Anunnaki creating us and creating them essentially in these physical meat sacks yeah pretty much but you have to also throw in the reptilians because the reptilians needed um more warrior like individuals and if you take a look at these guys they're they're not warrior material so they would have modified us we came afterwards and then the Anunnaki took what the reptilians had modified and tried to sort of bring it back in line with what they were and that's what, why we ended up the way we've ended up. Very warlike, um, sex maniacs that uh, have short lifespans and become very aggressive at some times. It's, it's sort of hardwired into our nature. So essentially our beings have been tampered with from multiple off-world beings. Yes, and every single, every single one of these groups that I hear that are trying to do... Uh, I guess make contracts with the humans on Earth. They have to go through all these other species that already have, I guess, programs, they call them, on Earth, where they've been abducting people and trying to get them to meet someone else, sort of prearrange it so that they'd be attracted to some individuals. So they're looking for a genetic breeding sort of um, system. You've heard of those where the greys were abducting women and uh, creating a hybrid species. Oh, yeah. With Absolutely. some of their cells. Yeah, uh, that was really fascinating. These women would be like three months pregnant, and all of a sudden they wouldn't be pregnant at all, and they go to the doctor, doctor didn't want to hear anything about it. So they didn't have anyone, anyone to turn to. But um, those things they're creating are not human, and you can't take a child, especially something that's predominantly genetically human, and just keep it in isolation. Don't hold it. Just leave it in a corner to develop on its own. It's going to have psychological damage, and it's probably not going to live past the age of 14. You know, humans have to have, they have to be interacted with, they have to be held. You have to play with them, or they don't develop properly. So uh, that seems to be a pro big problem for them. And then once they're down here, they don't know how to, they don't have any common sense. I mean, I've seen people with no common sense that were very, very intelligent. These people, uh, they just do not know how to blend in. And only, I don't know that they ever will. Supposedly, that's what they were trying to do. Um, that sounds like Dr. Then, Jacob's work. He says that a lot of the people that he regresses that have been abducted, they're trying to get them to show them how to walk across the street properly and how to act when you go in the kitchen and just normal stuff. Like he basically said, common sense. How to set up sense. furniture in your bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, 
I don't. I don't know why they're trying to do it because it, it serves no purpose if they're that intelligent. Just leave them on the ships, train them to operate your ships. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense to bring them to Earth. Um, the only thing I, I could see why they would want to bring them to Earth is because of what people are calling the Ascension, or what is believed to be the Ascension. When that happens, they would want them to be on Earth. Hoping. What about like Manchurian maybe, candidates? Sorry to interrupt, but that's what was coming no, to my mind. No, I don't think they'd be. I don't think they'd be Manchurian candidates. They're not. <clears throat> they have the ability to make you do things telepathically. They can control you. They can make you wake up, get dressed, go get your car, and drive out into the um, the road where they're waiting for you. From the people that they've already, like let's say they're, it's their parent, one of the people that they took cells from, created them. I've heard of that. They don't like that control at all. Um, when they're at a job, like... They, they try and fit in and get a job somewhere. They, they don't really work very well. So they have to, um, let's say they go to a restaurant, they have to control the person giving them the food and make it look like they got paid when they didn't, but that person ends up getting fired. And uh, just little things like that. They, it's something they can't keep up. The, these things, the, the grays, there's two types of, of them. The work I did trying to... Um, figure out what these these were, the ones I was dealing with. During Eisenhower's um, meeting in the desert, there was a priest who was um, at the location, and he was told to keep quiet, but he didn't. He went to the Vatican and told them what had happened. There were several species meeting with the president and several other individuals, and they, they wanted us to disarm, and they would assist us in what's about to happen so we'd be ready for the ascension. The others, the greys, offered weapons and technology in exchange for abducting humans. They went with those guys. What was fascinating about them, though, was when they were abducting individuals, the military ordered them to only abduct 400 per year, and they needed the names and dates of um, the locations and addresses of these people. What the greys said, these particular type of greys, they said that they were from Earth, they said they were from the future, and they said they were horribly damaged by the radiation. Something bad had happened. They had gone underground into underground bunkers, and they thought they would survive. But what happened was females could not reproduce after 45 days underground. And then they had to use their cloning technology. That sounds pretty far-fetched, but uh, I've seen you know, cloning technology is very real. Um Anyway, these guys had it at that time, and that was the only way they could survive, by cloning themselves over and over and over. They were trapped underground during the earthquakes that took place. And this would be somewhere about what we would call the apocalypse time frame. Anyway, they finally got out of there. And when they got to the surface, they were horribly damaged by the radiation. The military jumped to the conclusion it was some sort of uh, galactic, not galactic, but um, ICBM war with other countries here on, on the planet. I immediately suspected the power plants because if, if we lose power or one of those gets damaged, they start releasing a tremendous amount of radiation. They have a lot of fuel rods that will burn for, for a long, long time. And that will cause a, a huge cloud of radiation that will pretty much poison anything gets anywhere near it. There's 120 on the East Coast alone. So um, you're, you've got a tremendous amount of, of death just, just waiting there for people. Anyway, these guys said that they're – the DNA was horribly damaged, that some other extraterrestrials came by, found them, and took them to their worlds. And so when uh, these greys, when you see them, smooth skin with the, the almond-shaped eyes, those are actually an outer suit that they wear. And some movies have brought this out, some documentaries. Underneath, their skin looks like the bark of a tree and smells like putrid cinnamon. And you don't want to touch it. They have so much bacteria on them. But um, they... They had kept themselves alive for a long time. There they were some of them that had some human cells, and those are the ones I believe that are trying to create these uh, birthing projects. But this particular group came back to Earth, and they said they wanted to get the DNA from their ancestors, the ones who went down into these subterranean um, cities that they had for themselves, their bunkers, and repair their, their DNA using the DNA of their great ancestors, their grandfathers, their parents. And that's not what they did. They started abducting a lot of people, way more than 400. And then they started um, 
messing with them in a way that would sort of wake them up spiritually and move them away from the path that would have taken them into the underground bunkers. That's why they weren't releasing any of the of the addresses or the names of these individuals. So basically what they did was they found a way to prevent their grandfathers and grandmothers from ever meeting with each other or their parents from ever meeting with each other. That means they had to cease existing and thereby uh, creating a sort of self-sacrifice. I believe that's why it was permitted to be done. Anyway, that was that particular group. So they prevented them from going down in the ground bunkers. When the military started doing experiments in the 50s with women in colleges asking for volunteers to stand the ground for long periods of time, they realized that after about 45 days, the women's uh, reproductive system shut down. So they realized these things were telling the truth. And then they started building the underground bunkers because they figured they would need them for these uh, whatever event was coming up into the future. So that was my my extent to my knowledge of the greys. Also, most of the greys, the little ones we see that walk in four or five at a time, those in the Bible in scripture are called the raytheum, dead things, because they're not alive. They're more machine. They're biomechanical. So they don't have souls. So people hear, oh, they don't have souls, they must be demons. And no, they're, they're just machines. They don't, they answer to, um, you know, commands. They can perform simple functions, but you only give them as much brain power as they need. And that's why it takes three or four of them to accomplish their job. But in the Bible, when you see, hear Raytheon, just think of the little gray ones. That's what those are. You know, I'm thinking of the artificial intelligence here in the States even, and they're almost completed. There is a IBM supercomputer that is calculated to run 300 quadrillion floating points per second. And the quantum computers, I don't have enough data to show exactly how fast they actually are. I do have the data on many of these silicone-based chips, and even the one in China right now that's running 93 quadrillion floating points per second. I mean, that's just... That is so incredible. So where am I going with this? The software that they have for predictive programming combined with all the technology, all the research, all the data, essentially, that has been obtained from each human being, from their habits, the metadata, etc. I wonder if there's already like a ghost in the machine and the archons or these entities possibly have a way to literally control, like you said, the politicians, the corporate gurus, those that have the money and the honey, essentially, to do their bidding. And it seems like they're turning this planet into a transhuman slash all microchipped, all electronic, all artificial essence. I mean, now they're even running out 5G, uh, not 4G anymore. Now it's 5G where they want to have 5 billion hertz machines on every on every block, essentially, just blasting people with Wi-Fi constantly. I mean, the 4G isn't good enough. We got to have 5G. And then 6G, and then 7. I mean, just add a couple more zeros behind the hertz. It's getting ridiculous. Well, Jason sent me some information dealing with AI. And they have found these uh, these signals coming from space. And they seem to have been sent from the past into the future. And these signals pretty much tell them how to build these machines. So guess what they're doing? Oh, let's build them. Let's see how, who can build them first. And that's not smart. These were AIs who lost the war long ago. So they sent this information to the future, hoping somebody would be dumb enough to build these things. And that's exactly what they're doing, exactly what you described, this AI system. Um, it's a very ancient war that took place. Uh, they never really lost, sort of just kind of to be continued. And that was the reason Tiamat was destroyed. You remember the that black goo that ran all over the ley lines of that world? It was... Uh, Massive artificial intelligence controlling that planet. And well, is these that guys, what it is? So, mm -hmm. is, that, is, is black goo actually like artificial intelligence microorganisms that wherever they Nanite. go, they connect to the, to the group consciousness? So if it's a million miles away, it can send that information back and be controlled? Right. And if any part of them gets destroyed in any kind of battle or we find a way to destroy them, then that information is transmitted to the others so they'll know what we're about to try and work against it. In other words, to fortify themselves against that type of attack. And the black goo is a sort of nanite. I understand the military immediately thought super soldier, right? Because these things can get, get inside of you and modify you at the molecular level. They're that small. And they did. They started modifying people. But what they, they started, these things weren't creating super soldiers. They were creating superhumans, but 
they were more bele- uh, benevolent. They were less aggressive, uh, calmer. They could, they just had this desire to either learn a lot of languages or, or learn a lot of uh, sophisticated information. And it, it worked, just not what the government wanted because they couldn't control them. And so they released it into the, into the sewer lines over in Europe, that particular group did. And so this stuff got into all the organisms in the, in the sewers and then became airborne. And anyone who's living next to these things all of a sudden started reading more and speaking different languages. And it's, uh, it's pretty fascinating when you hear these people talk about it. But they, they sort of tracked it down and found out what it was. It was the AIs that were released into the sewer systems. So this has already been released. But it is working more in a beneficial way. Now, the AIs, um, apparently the reptilians are allied with the AI. And their bodies are completely saturated by these tiny nanites. But the um, the greys used to be slaves to the reptilians, from what I understand, they broke away. The, the whole AI thing is interesting when you start looking at uh, autism. Because if you take a human child and make them catatonic through all these injections you give them, an AI system like this could easily infiltrate their body, connect where they need to, and run the body. Give them a, a vessel, sort of. Certainly. It would make it easier. And if you've seen the film The Accountant, which just came out a short while ago on video, where Ben Affleck does a great job playing this kid that has autism, and then he learns how to be essentially a rogue super soldier, and the abilities that he had is incredible. And if you have autism, your sensory perception is different. Therefore, like you can't feel things as much as somebody else. It's almost like when you, if you are, let's say you're you're, you're holding your own hands. It's almost like you're holding hands with mittens on because the nervous system gets damaged from the chemicals in the vaccine. So absolutely, I can see that. And I also wonder if they do this on mass scales to maybe pull out 100 savants out of 100,000 people that they physically damage and mentally and spiritually. The, the vaccine agenda, there's a multiple line of, of reasons for it, I feel. Oh, and, and get this, just while we're at vaccines, the MMR vaccine, there was a recent study released, and I will I will actually release this data here shortly, 2,000 plus parts per billion of glyphosate in the MMR vaccine. 2,000 parts per billion. You know what glyphosate is? It's Roundup. That means you're literally injecting yourself with Roundup. You're injecting babies with Roundup. Welcome to the New World Order. They love you so much. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> it makes me so mad. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, well, we're making some headway, but these people, they, they're still very powerful and in very powerful positions. So draining the swamp, swamp's going to take a little longer, I think. Um, one of the things um, I wanted to connect Planet X with, because we started talking about that, um, this, going back 12,000 years, again, 12,000 years, everything always goes back to 12,000 years, that the major damage that took place to, um, let's say our world exploded, right, and blew up, somebody blew it up. And we're right on the edge of the section that, you know, gets blown out into space. Well, the atmosphere is gone and space is incredibly cold. So you're subjected to the space without um, without the warmth of Earth around or anything else around. And you would literally flash freeze because of the of the temperature from space, how cold it is. And that's the only the only way I would see that something could flash freeze. I, I don't see any other way you could do it. But there was that movie, The Day After Tomorrow, with those gigantic... Um, vortexes that allowed the outer space temperatures to drop in because they weren't being pushed back sort of like a reverse vacuum and brought the cold temperatures down and in, in that movie they portrayed people just kind of taking a breath and just freezing in place there's also that fox down and something similar to that happened over in uh, russia there was a fox crossing a stream you can see his nose out of the ice and his eyes and ears out of the ice, and the tip of his tail out of the ice, but the rest of him is in the ice. So he was swimming across the stream, and that flash froze. That was uh, back when we were first experiencing those those polar vortexes they speak of. So these beings, um, there were quite a few beings here on this on this world, but. According to um, what they call the Muhammad Accord, something they signed back in the 16th century, or actually uh, 6th century, they're not supposed to show themselves anymore. They're supposed to remain hidden and just kind of allow humanity to see what would play out, kind of hide in the shadows of the hidden hand sort of thing to run the world that way. Uh-huh. 
And uh, that's kind of what they've been doing. So they've they've just stayed in the back, see where we'd go. And apparently, because of all the pedophile stuff coming out and all the attention being uh, drawn upon them, they're kind of sh- kind of shine shine spotlight over in that direction. Hey, look over here. And oh, this is so important, monumental. We just need to put this pedophile stuff aside, and we'll get back to it later, which they never will. They what they want to do is basically put us in a bigger box. Inside the box we're in right now, there's no such thing as uh, aliens off world or, or life from other worlds. In this bigger box that they want to put us in, there were a type of humanoid on Earth or possibly Mars that was very advanced. Their world was destroyed. They came here to Earth and eventually got uh, flash frozen down. And the South Pole, they'll probably claim it was some sort of pole shift. And we got mixed with them in the uh, breeding just natural selection sort of thing. And then uh, humanity sort of came out of that is what they're planning to do. They want to spread out the technology release over 100 years so that by the time the disclosures happen, everybody will be dead, the ones who committed all these atrocities against humanity, so they won't be held accountable. Anyway, that's their plan. I don't think it'll work because there's other plans in the uh, in the works. But that's kind of what's taking place on there and why they're releasing this information right now. Um. But the thing that gets me, though, is Planet X is a, is a very big part of, of Christianity. People just don't realize that. Uh, when they speak in Revelation of the Red Dragon, that's Planet X. It's got the wings, it's got the long red tail, and it's red, and it looks like fire. And when you start looking at the um, symbolism and, and what they're describing that this thing does, it is Planet X. Uh, David Mead pretty much points to it being Planet X when he figured out that um, Virgo in September 23rd will have uh, Jupiter in its womb area for 42 weeks at that point. And um, in the actual writings where it says the woman illuminated by the sun, it doesn't exactly say the sun. It's, she's illuminated. Something is illuminating this constellation. The moon's at her feet and she's about to give birth. You've, you've interviewed David Mead a while back, right? Yeah, matter of fact, that was the first interview that I did on Planet X, and that's got over 450,000 views. That was a really good show with David. I need to get a hold of him again. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's incredible, uh, the research he did. I tried to get a hold of him, and I sent him an, an email telling him that his date is off. The, the I think he's like 3,800 years ago as opposed to 3,600 years ago. And the only reason I explained that it was off was because during that passage of uh, Planet X, it introduced Venus back into our system. It had Venus in its uh, gravity well, took it with it during the destruction of Tiamat, and it was reintroduced at that time. The Mayans record this was happening. Velikovsky mentions that Venus was never mentioned before this. And Venus finally settled into orbit, and when it settled into orbit between Earth and and the Sun, it, it sort of pushed Earth back a little bit and gave us five additional days to our calendar. All the ancient calendars are 360 days. And oh, man. The- I, I, I got to jump in on that real quick. The, I was thinking about that just the other day when I broke down the New Jerusalem. And, I mean, to a T, literally, I, the size of it, I was able to put together the amount of square feet that each person would have left if you took 144,000. And the 12 was constantly going back. And then the 360... So I'm just interjecting here real quick, and please continue, but I was thinking that the past few days about how I'm wondering why they changed from 360 days to 365, and another thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately as well is the asteroid belt, and was there a planet at one point in time that got smashed by something, and now that's the asteroid belt. So once again, I apologize for interrupting, but I just wanted to throw that in real quick. Yeah, that's a planet I call Tiamat. Some people pronounce it Tiamat. Some call it... uh Phaeton. There's several names for it. They said that uh, they don't think there was enough matter there to to create a planet that size. But that's because most of it was uh, blown out into space. The comets all come from there. It was a water world. And a lot of the debris was taken into the gravity well of Nibiru as it passed by, or Planet X as it passed by. And the remains of it are what's called the hammered bracelet. It's the uh, the asteroid belt. But they have actually, with satellites and telescopes, been able to detect clay on these asteroids. You can't get clay on asteroids that, that never formed into a planet because that, that requires tidal forces, water, pressure, and, 
uh, erosion of the soil to create clay. But these have clay on them. Also, they're all they're all orbiting on their axis in the same direction. So that was part of that world, and we're part of that world. Earth is part of what once was that world, and when Earth finally sort of stabilized, the uh, the calendar was 360 days. I always wondered why 360, why can't I just make a nice 400 degree circle, 100 degrees in each corner <laughs> instead of 90? Uh, because the, the calendar was that way, 360 degrees, you got 90 days for each of the seasons because we had four seasons and the earth was on its axis. And on Tiamat, there were no seasons. It never rained before that time. There was a very heavy concentration of oxygen and it almost looked like a foggy day all the time. And you would um, you would heal faster if you were cut. You lived much longer. And once that was destroyed, then uh, weather patterns formed on Earth. And we only have about 12,000 to 14,000 years of erosion on the planet, weather erosion. It doesn't go back any further than that. So this planet is 4 billion years old. And we've got at least, what, 2 billion years of an ocean with weather. There'd be nothing left but rocks and water. There would be no soil left from the erosion of the rain. And uh, that's very, very clearly uh, documented that we only have about 12,000 erosion on the planet. So the planet is not that old. The evidence for it fits into Earth only being formed 12,000 years ago. So um, that would be roughly about three passings of Planet X. I think that one Planet X, uh, during the destruction of Tiamat, everything in its gravity well may have slowed it down because the timeline isn't quite there. It, it's a little too long, and then it comes back around 7,000 years, forms. then you have the Great Flood. So you have the catastrophe before that, then you have the Great Flood. And at that point, you have a brand, that's, that's the human we are right now, after Noah. Because um, Noah was, when he was born, he was supposed to have uh, very light skin, reddish hair, and his eyes seemed to kind of glow. And his father, Lamech, was concerned about this. And he questions his wife, and she's like, I've not known anyone else but you. And uh, so he went and spoke to his grandfather, which was Enoch, the same one in the Bible who created all the pyramids. So Enoch went and uh, spoke to the sky guardians and then came back and said, do not harm the child. They have, uh, in the best wording they could use, artificially inseminate your wife with this particular child. He is the sort of the prototype of the next race. And uh, that those writings were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's called the Book of Lamech. He was a father of Noah. So I find it interesting that sometimes um, Tom Horn and uh, Steve Quayle will speak of the purity of the line of Noah from Adam and Eve and how the demons keep trying to infiltrate him. <laughs> you'll realize he was a Nephilim. He was genetically engineered. And it's right there. The information is right there for them to go look at. They just kind of ignore it. It doesn't fit into their little plans. But, the Dead um, Sea Scrolls are fascinating. I've actually got a copy of the uh, the newest translations. And if you read the secret book of John, I mean, it's got a completely different version of Genesis. Yeah, and they, um, the book of Enoch wasn't in there. The book of Enoch was hunted down and destroyed for uh, millennia, they they finally thought they'd gotten rid of every copy. And when you actually see the Book of Enoch, you realize that Christ quoted from it quite a bit. It was required reading at that time when uh, Christ was on the ground, on earth, and they were going to remove the Book of Jo um, of Jude from the Bible because he quotes from that book. He says he quotes from the book, and so they were going to remove it since that book was not in existence. But there's several books that are missing. There's the Book of um, the Wars of the Elohim. That book is missing, and I think there's like nine other books it mentions that are missing, that these were very important books and were not supposed to you know, be destroyed. But there was actually sort of a witch hunt, witch hunt by the Romans who ordered a lot of these documents destroyed. The Book of Enoch says that angels can take form. In other words, they can become human beings. They can be born like human beings, uh, inhabit a body, and they have to destroy that because Christ – if you start looking into into the Bible, into the angel of the Lord, the one called the angel of the Lord, when the angel of the Lord is described, this particular angel, and he's always called the angel of the Lord, fits everything Christ did. Everything um, that Christ later does, this particular angel sort of mimics in advance. 
So if one of the angels, the angel of the Lord came on to Mary, well, that means that he got into the body and he was the one who was born as Christ. And the book of Enoch describes this as happening. This was uh, what they call the matrix. And that word, I don't ever remember reading that word in the Bible. I have read many, many passages of the Bible, many versions of it, and I never recalled the word matrix being in there. But it's in there six times now. You've heard of the, what's that thing called, the Mandela effect? Yes, I have. Well, that's one of the changes to the Bible now. It says matrix. And it's in reference to the woman's womb. I spoke with the author of the matrix, with... um, uh, Sophia Stewart, and I had always thought it was the Waskowski brothers, but apparently they plagiarized. They plagiarized everything: the name of the book, the name of the characters, everything. Anyway, uh, it took her six years in court, but she finally got all her rights back. The Matrix, she explained, is um, w- when they created woman, and just one other author has created a book. I need to get my hands on. It's on Amazon, and she's describing how when woman was created, they sort of went overboard with. Um, the upgrades that they put in woman because the males were sort of a worker and that's what Adam Adamu means worker. But the female in order for her to have a child with the spirit, the uh, soul from creator, she has to have a matrix. A matrix is sort of a stargate within the female and the female during the gestation period this matrix um, sort of gets the signature of the soul that will be in the child. And when it's creating the cells of this body, it is causing the DNA, what we would call junk DNA, to be aligned, tuned, in sync with this soul. So that soul can then inhabit the body, sort of connects like an avatar and can um, express itself and, and be here on Earth. That's what the matrix is. And so I was really fascinated by what she was explaining it as being. And she also explained that the she also wrote the Terminator series. And the Terminator series is actually the first part of the Matrix series. That's how the machines eventually got powerful enough. I remember several years ago, actually, talking to her when I was on a different platform. And I read that screenplay that she put together. And it's interesting. It seemed to me like a lot of the... The information that she got was stuff that you could pull out of Revelation, but that's you know, and in and in, that's just my opinion. But you know, the the one thing that I do notice a lot of is there's so much transhumanism, transhumanism, and AI, and even in a lot of the new films now, they are portraying the androids in the TV series Human as being more humane than humans are, and it seems like we're certainly getting a slap in the face. Whereas the the push is towards this AI construct, which makes you wonder why, why in the world would we give so much power over to an artificial intelligence and even mentally give away our own rights in in a sense? Well, she, that was one of her biggest concerns that these these AI will eventually take over, and she's got enough degrees to um, understand the <laughs> the concept of the programming of the AIs. To an AI, we're we're in a coma. We, we don't think anywhere near as fast as they do. But um, AIs aren't alive. They can make decisions and they can make um, suggestions or they can they can plan things out. But you do recall when they had that big chess game with um, IBM and Big Kasparov? Blue? Kasparov? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They wouldn't let him see the programming. And there were six chess players, masters, back there uh, supposedly um, counseling these programmers. That's not what's yeah. happening. Big right. Blue was just a big box, and these six guys were all playing this one chess player. So uh, let's let's say it was a real AI, IBM One. Okay, where's the technology? What did you do with it? They put it in a box, they put it in mothballs, and they hid it away. They never did anything with it because there was nothing there. There was nothing to Big Blue. It was just a scam. And uh, that's, that's why they wouldn't let them see the... Um, Printouts. There were no printouts, and basically it was just a, a bunch of chess masters playing the one chess master, and IBM getting a lot of publicity for it. I'm glad that's you brought what the that evidence. Up. That's what the evidence seems to point to. So, um, with the Catholic Church, 
the work I was doing, I had grown up Roman Catholic, and I had wanted to be a priest, uh, an exorcist for the Roman Catholic Church, but they um, they were doing away with the exorcist at the time, so I, I ended up leaving the church. But um, Father Malachi Martin, he was he spoke on this a few times, but he was fairly certain that whatever this was was something that comes from space, something that's approaching Earth, and. He, uh, he got a chance to read the actual prophecy, the third prophecy, and he vehemently stated that was not it. He read it, and that was that was not what they released. They've never released the third prophecy of Fatima. But the church became concerned because it spoke of something coming from the cosmos and causing great destruction coming into the solar system. So um, they're supposed to have a satellite that uh, NASA launched for them, flying out in that direction. Uh, towards Orion to look for this thing. And they also have uh, that one telescope they have over in Italy, and they've got that that new one they built on Mount Graham. This one's uh, the only one of its kind. It's a binocular, so there's two, two uh, specific scopes that are looking in the infrared region. And these are theoretical. They're the first of their kind, and they named the thing Lucifer. So they're looking for this object to be coming from the southern hemisphere, they know it's there. They know it's coming, and they've also been rewriting the. Uh, they've been rewriting the Gospels. A new version will be coming out, and it will include, uh, I guess, the Anunnaki in it, because it, they're definitely tied in to everything that happened to Christ during the crucifixion. The um, tie to Planet X and the Exodus. Many many researchers have already. Uh, it out that that's when it came by. We were talking about Mead a little while ago, and his dating of 3800 BC is about 200 years off. And I explained to him, uh, you've got Venus in there in your calculations. Take Venus out because Venus would have just kind of been a rogue planet at that time, it wouldn't have been settled into position yet. And, and calculate the time, you'll come up closer to 3600 years. And I also discovered. That because th this disc he was talking about, the Nebra Sky Disc, that green disc that has um, gold stars on it. It's actually brass with gold inlay. That disc it pretty much is um, a star observatory. They, they've got this one circle on one side, half circle, then another half circle on the other horizon. And they're uh, about 72 degrees apart, so you can see where the, the moon would or the sun would go as far as it could in one horizon during this, say, summer, and then it moves in the other direction to the other equinox in the wintertime, and you'll see the, the limit of where the sun would go or where it would rise and where it would set. So we have one on the east and west horizon. Stonehenge is similar, and there's several others, several others throughout the world that are similar. I believe these were earning systems, and the reason I believe that is because you could check every year at that time when the equinoxes were supposed to be coming, and you would see that the, the sun rose exactly where it's supposed to. Once you saw the sun was out of position, then you would know to start preparing for the return of the thing. And uh, WSO, the uh, Wormwood Systems Observers, they noted that uh, the sun was off by 17 degrees during the during the winter um, solstice. It was uh, it's supposed to be at a specific location. On the horizon, it was not. Also, the other day, um, two months ago, I walked out of the front porch here. It faces the back porch. But it was completely lit up. And I'm looking around. Where's the light coming from? It was the moon. It was lighting up the entire north wall. The moon has never done that. It's never been that far north that it could do that. And the moon was way out of position. So that's kind of this object coming in. These, The earth is wobbling. And um, the contact that I have with the off-worlders, they're trying to keep the planet from going over into a pole shift. The poles are both moving very fast right now. The one in the north, of course, everybody knows about that one. But the one in the south is already into the water. It's off of the mainland of Antarctica, and it's moving north. It's already on the, in the ocean. And both of them, at the speed they're headed, they should uh, meet in the Indian Ocean at a location where there was a buoy where suspicious observers noted that the the surface or the base of the ocean rose nearly 1,000 meters in one day. And it did it again 
I think it was 600 meters the next day. And then that buoy was pulled offline. But that's the location that both poles are headed to. So if they keep the speed that they're going, they both meet, meet up there. South Pole's traveling fa- uh, slower than the, than the North Pole is. And the uh, object in the North Pole, that one has a shaped magnetic field. They're trying to hold the Northern Pole in that position and another one in the Southern Pole. And they've also been removing all the uh, asteroids, but too many are starting to get through. You probably heard of a few asteroids striking here and there. You'll hear more. They're, uh, they're not getting them all out of the way. We, we will be getting hit. Uh, Mars is getting hit. The moon is getting hit. And if you recall, Napolitano, when she left, the, um, she was in charge of security. She mentioned that she was resigning because of the catastrophe that was about to happen. She said it would be cosmic in nature. Woolsey, the CIA director, said something very similar. And what she was describing was these these asteroid strikes. Now, we should have got them already. It's just that they've been moving the really big ones out of the way. And the reason they're doing this is because of um, what humanity is and what humanity has done. And we look around, we don't see any major progress. If anything, we see we've lost a lot of ground. But... Um, On another show, I mentioned that Dolores Cannon has spoken of these three waves of volunteers that had come to Earth to try and change the outcome of the world because 850 years into the future, there's great destruction across the galaxy. And it's basically caused because of Earth, because of some tyrannical things that happen on Earth. If you can imagine the, I guess, the galactic empire in Star Wars, something along those lines combined with the New World Order controlling the entire galaxy, there, there'd be no way to get around it because they would have birthing centers and at these centers they would eliminate the uh, individuals that had a higher frequency rate, I guess, a more spiritual. They're already doing that from what I understand. There's people who monitor the baby rooms and they will eliminate the child and that's why you have these people called walk-ins. Someone will be born in the child, and they'll grow up to a certain age, and then they leave the body, and the walk-in comes in so that they weren't eliminated at birth. I don't know if you've ever heard of walk-ins before. I have, actually. We did a show the other day where I talked to one of the guests, and they brought up the walk-ins. That's a fascinating subject. Well, that's why they do that, to to keep from getting eliminated at the birthing stations. So um, one thing that I found fascinating about the... The Exodus, not only that it matched everything that took place, the timing, the cloud that they said they were under when they were walking in the desert. Because once uh, the Santorini caldera went off, which is something like the Yellowstone caldera, it would have caused a cloud about 18 months long, a dark cloud of ash that would have prevented the sun from shining through very brightly. You could see the sun, but you would not be able to get a shadow from the sun. And when this happened again in the year 535, which plunged the earth into the dark ages, the diaries of that time speak of the sun coming out for about four hours, but you could not see your shadow. And the uh, everything tasted horrible. This powder, this dust landed on, on the water. And uh, they got their drinking beer a lot at that time and the wine that they had and had to dig up new wells, new springs. But um, it set the world back considerably into the dark ages they just weren't prepared they didn't have that kind of food stores the church did because they were demanding 10 percent of your crop so any any royalty that survived that would have owed an allegiance to the church and then the church pretty much rewrote the everything on the planet they now we were on a flat earth and they were the uh, intermediaries between the creator and us and they were going to be reading it all in latin so that was a, a system of control that lasted for a, a very long time. And the, the exodus, getting back to the exodus, when it took place, it, it would appear that Moses is not half, is half, well, completely Israelite. According to the Jews, Moses is, is 100% Israelite. He was uh, moved along the trusses of the water in that little floating basket and and then the uh, one of the was she a sister of Pharaoh or whatever and he picked him up, but in the actual 
uh, history of it, it turns out that the word Moses means rightful heir to the throne. Moses was the son of the Pharaoh. Now, the the wife that he had, she was an Israelite princess, so Moses was half Israelite. But in order to hide this information, the Jews changed the timing of Exodus, moved it forward 400 years, and um, distanced themselves from At Moses, who was the brother of Moses, the the Pharaoh at the time of the Exodus. And then they pretty much kept everything else intact. All the stories, the destruction of Jericho, everything else remained that way, just that the timing was off, all the dates were off. But that didn't bother them, it was a small matter. However, when they found Jericho, when they finally discovered it, they were amazed that it existed at all, because it was something that was in the Bible, and they didn't really believe that was a documented history. And what fascinated them was that Jericho was destroyed exactly the way the Bible said it was destroyed. The walls were sort of collapsed in on themselves. And inside there, uh, if people had like stone jewelry or whatever they were wearing, they were still wearing it. The gold was missing, the precious metals, all their food stores, everything was intact. Nothing had been taken. So they surmised that the Jews must have seen it as they came out. They must have come across Jericho. And then they put it into their storyline saying that they had destroyed it, taking credit for it. Because the destruction of 50 years earlier than what the Jews said uh, was their exodus in 1250 BC, so roughly the time of the last passing of, of Nibiru, which would have been 1550 BC, right in that time frame. And um, I found that fascinating, and, and the reason, again, they did it, because this is their most important prophet. You can't have him being half Egyptian. So they changed all that around. And... Um, <laughs>